Now, let's take a look at some of the places in the book and we want to focus on places that refer to the Trinity or to God as being, a single being. I'll try to simply read the text and reserve my comments to the end, except in a couple of places that I need to emphasize something. Now, of course, I'll be focusing on the word being. So let's begin. The oneness of God refers to the singleness of his being. The oneness of God refers to the singleness of his being. These statements say nothing, however, about the inner nature of the one absolute God. At times, oneness can involve the meaning of unity. For example, in John chapter 10, verse 30, chapter 17, verse 21 and 23. However, if the oneness expressed in this text is conceived only as a gathering of independent oneness, that come together in order to form a unity, the specific singleness characteristic of the one Godhead to which they testify is dissolved into a plurality of gods. Since the God of the Bible is one and not many, all the various revelations about him presented throughout the Bible refer to the same one divine reality and not a plurality of divine beings. The personal complexity of the one divine being that is clearly articulated in the New Testament is already expressed in the Old Testament in a less specific way. Without the Old Testament background and the specific historical revelation of the eternal Son in Jesus, the eternal Son in Jesus Christ as presented by the New Testament writers, talk about the Father and the Holy Spirit would not have been enough to reveal the inner Trinitarian being of God. The biblical idea of the subordination of God the Son to God the Father belongs not to the inner structure of the divine reality, but rather to the sphere of the accomplishment of the plan of salvation. In a broad sense, the subordination of the Son to the Father can be seen as expressing the unity of the inner Trinitarian life as the Godhead works out salvation in and throughout the history of the great controversy. Now, I just want to point out here that in contrast to the mentioning of one divine being, the individual members are referred to as divine realities. The individual members are here referred to as divine realities. Let's continue. Jesus God incarnated used the word Father to address God, thus the Father-Son image reveals the personal and relational features of the divine plurality of God's one being. The direct reference to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit clearly sets forth the threefold plurality of divine persons, while the designation of them all as the name of God in singular clearly sets forth oneness of the divine being. Now here too, I just want to point out the distinction between divine persons and divine being, meaning according to the church is a difference or a distinction between persons and being. While they are divine persons, they consist of one divine being. In scripture, God has revealed his transcendent nature as Trinity, namely 
three distinct divine persons who directly and historically in history and consists constitute the one divine trinitarian being we still get the the point that i was referring to there are three distinct divine persons but the three distinct divine persons constitute the one divine trinitarian being let's continue moreover adventism conceives the idea of persons in its biblical sense as referring to three individual centers of intelligence and action three individual centers of intelligence and action within the procedural area the trinitarian godhead of scripture functions as the center of theology now before we continue the next step you still believe the official position of the seventh day adventist church in regards to the trinity is three separate beings as we are often told locally do you think that's the official position of the church really now let's make a, comp a brief comparison to determine whether the sda trinity is different from the catholic one because that's what is often said remember the point we've just read within the procedural area the trinitarian godhead of scripture functions as the center of theology now let's look at the catechism of the catholic church and this is the catechism of the catholic church from the official vatican website we want to read just a few places for comparison the trinity is one we do not confess three gods but one god in three persons i don't know whether you see any similarity somewhere we do not confess three gods but one god in three persons the mystery of the most holy trinity is the central mystery of the christian faith and life now that is what the catholic church says while the seventh day adventist church says the trinity trinitarian godhead of scripture functions as the center of theology central mystery of christian faith and life center of theology indeed according to the catholic church the trinity is the center of every other teaching including sunday rest or sunday worship or sunday observance let's read a few quotes from the dwey catechism what is sunday or the lord's day in general it is a day dedicated by the apostles to the honor of the most holy trinity it is a day dedicated by the apostles to the honor of the most holy trinity and in memory of that christ our lord and in memory that Christ our Lord arose from the dead upon Sunday, set down the Holy Ghost on a Sunday, and therefore is called the Lord's Day. It is also called Sunday from the old Roman denomination of Dies Solis, the day of the sun, to which it was sacred. Now, in conclusion, Do you believe the one, do you believe in one divine trinitarian being or three distinct beings according to how you perceive it or according to your own belief do you believe in one divine trinitarian being or do you believe in three distinct beings we've seen the official position of the church what is your position Please share your comments as we continue studying the Bible together. Thank you.